Cousins, Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I installed a custom live well in the front casting deck of this build that I recently completed. In this video, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of the process and how we got to this point and then show you the final product. So stick around and I'm gonna show you how I did it. Hey guys, Six Sense Fishing recently released their new Divine Spinnerbait. We all know that Sixth Sense brings their A-game when it comes to their lure craftsmanship, quality, and color schemes. The Divine Spinnerbait is no different, featuring premium blades, heat-shredded stainless steel wire, super sharp black nickel hooks, screw lock bait keeper, and a hand-tied skirt. There's plenty of weight options and phenomenal color schemes available on SixthSenseFishing.com. Show your support for the channel by using the code BRIGADE at checkout to save 10% off your entire order. And don't forget to check out my cousins at Waterland Fishing Optics for all of your polarized sunglass needs. Use the code BRIGADE at waterlandco.com to save 15% off your entire order. Let's get into the video. We are on the road to 50K here on the channel. So if you like John Boat content and what I do in these videos, consider hitting that subscribe button and I would greatly appreciate the support. Alrighty guys, I apologize in advance, but this is not my typical step-by-step -step installation video. During this build, there was a lot going on and it was very hard to slow down enough to film this live oil portion step by step, especially given that this was a custom build with a lot of decisions being made and built on the fly. With that said, once I got the live oil and the plumbing all in the boat, I decided I still wanted to cover this project to some extent. This is a unique setup and I felt filming it could still provide some beneficial and useful information for you guys. I have other live oil videos on my channel and I'll do an updated full step by step video sometime in the future. But in the meantime, I figured you could take away what you can from this project. And I'll cover it more through the video, but the point of this setup was to have the live oil tank and the pump and the front deck, but had the live oil fill inlet in the back by the transom. We wanted to run a screen through hole fitting for the fill and did not want that sticking out of the side of the boat. Side fills are an option, even going screenless, but what you see is how we did it and it worked great. But like I said, take away what you can and modify to your own liking. There is a full build video of this entire boat up on my channel, so feel free to check that out. Also, the custom live oil tank, splash guard, lid, and flow right plumbing parts were all purchased from tinyboatnation.net. You can use the promo code BRIGADE at checkout and save 5% off your entire order. Parts used for this live oil project are linked down in the video description. Now that I've got everything installed as far as the flow right premium live oil kit, all the plumbing, and the Nate's Custom Boats and Accessories Live Oil Tub. It's time to take this thing to the water and see if my theory actually works and if this thing will operate. But before I do, let me explain to you what my theory is and how I designed it. So this is a low 17 footer, it's a 170. There was originally a live well in this area. Well, this is gonna be an electric only tournament boat here in Georgia. And uh, we're utilizing this area to turn into what I call a mega hatch which is gonna be packed with lithium battery packs, 48 volt battery packs. The reason we go to the live well is for battery storage. So we're putting the live well up front. This is also gonna help with weight distribution. When this thing's got water in it, it's gonna help this front end kind of sit lower. And uh, right here, just front center of the boat is where we want the weight in these electric only rigs. So we're going with the live well up front. Now, the problem that I ran into was if I put the pump in the back with the Flowrite Premium Kit that I installed, it's got to pump the water through the hose to the live well, and then if you want to recirculate it, it's got to come out of the bottom and then go all the way back to the pump and then recirculate back through the hose. And so it's just a lot of distance to travel um, for hose and then routing. What I decided to do is mount the pump up front right here, so you got a short run through here and you've got a short run out the side everything's all good you've just got one long run from the back of the boat to the pump here's the kicker this pump is not going to suck water so what i've done is i've mounted this very low on the transom all right and what i'm hoping when we get to the water is that the water line is going to be right up in here somewhere and that this hose how it's routed the only good way I could route it, because I couldn't get it under the floor or through the channels, how it's routed in this area is going to be below the water line. And so what will happen is when this boat goes in the water, this hose will fill up with water and then water will fill, fill that air cavity. And then it goes back downhill to the pump here. So I'm hoping once water gets in it and there's no air pockets in it and this pump starts pumping, it will um, create suction and fill this live well up. That's what we're going to check out today. 
All right, I've got one of the customer's amped outdoor little lithium batteries that he's using for his trail motor electronics. And I'm just, when I get out to the water, this is how I'm gonna do it, run on some alligator clips. Just wanna verify this thing works. Before I take it out, we're gonna load up and get on the road. All right, guys, headed to the lake to test out the live wall on the low. Alrighty guys, at the local lake and I've got her in the water. I'm gonna take her out for a spin, see how she runs with this e-propulsion outboard. And I'm also going to go ahead and test the live well and see if we could get it in operational form. All right, guys, I got a little antsy and decided I wanted to go ahead and try the live well out and see if I could get it to fill and function properly while I was already tied off to the dock before taking this thing out for a little spin and see how this outboard does on this bigger boat. I wanted to show you guys real quick how this thing sits. And it's definitely not sitting in the water as low as I thought it would sit. I thought it would sit a lot lower. And there's only a couple inches maybe in the water with this thing. I do have the outboard on there, which is a little bit of weight. And I do have this battery pack, but not a whole lot of weight in this boat. It's completely naked. So with that being said, if I could get this live well to fill completely naked, as light as it's possibly going to be, then I'm confident once we add the weight back in it and you got a guy in here that's bigger than I am that owns this boat and you got, you know, maybe him with his tournament partner, it should be able to fill fine. So this, again, this is the highest it's going to sit. I already tried it out and um, it did have a little bit of airlock at the very beginning, but once I got it to flow, it flowed and filled up. So let's, uh, let's hook this thing up. Let's see if it will fill back up for me. There it goes. And now she's full force. This fitting here is below the water line so that the water line is right about here on the outside so the water is just coming through this hose and it's filling that air cavity and it's actually filling it a little bit uphill and then down the side because this over here at this point is still below the water line and then when it goes this way it kind of goes downhill to the pump and all we're doing right now is it's pumping water from the back. Now that that hose is full of water, it's uh, maintaining suction and it's going to fill this live well up. As you can see, it's working fine. And what's awesome about the flow right is all these quick connects. Nothing is leaking. And um, everything's working as planned. There's not a whole lot more to it than that. As you can see back here, no water, no leaks, and no water in the boat anywhere. Real happy about how this is working for me. And eventually what's gonna happen is on the side of this unit here where you see this orange, there's gonna be a cable that connects to that and that cable is gonna route around through this compartment to here where my switch panel is. That's gonna allow him to adjust his recirculation or fill modes. Um, but right now I could do that manually by kicking this over. What that's doing now is it's sucking the water out of the bottom of the live well and it's recirculating it. That's what that's doing. That water's going through that screen, through that hose, downhill, back through the pump, and then it's getting pumped back out the pump, through this hose, through here, and then back out. If I wanna pump the water out, all I'm gonna do is pull this, and it's gonna, it's gonna suck it out the bottom, and it's gonna redirect it through the pump, back up, and then out. As you can see, if I want to recirculate again, I simply push back in. We're back in business. And then over here, all this is, is the overflow for the system. So if you're pumping water in and you forget to turn it off, as you can see, all of these are three quarter inch hoses. So you're filling water with a three quarter inch hose. That's a one inch hose. It's a bigger hose. So all that does is if your water level gets to this point, it's going to overflow out the side, feed downhill, and then it's going to go out 
the side of the boat as a safety precaution that way you don't end up with water inside your boat and because this hose is a bigger diameter it takes more water out the boat faster than this is able to fill All right, guys, I'd say that that live oil test was a success, so we're going to get this thing back to the house, continue to work on it, get this thing built out, and then hopefully I'll be able to plug some footage in this video of this boat completely done, and I'll show you the live oil setup when she's fully finished. All right, guys, fast forward. The boat is done. And uh, believe it or not, I actually took this thing out on the water yesterday, and I only have one day to get some water footage, and we ran out of time on the water, so I wasn't unable to do a live oil walkthrough on the water i did fill the live well i did check a lot of things uh but i was unable to get the footage for this live well video so we're back at the house it's the following day the customer is going to pick the boat up today but i'm going to go ahead and give you a walkthrough of the finished product of the live well and how it operates let's go over a few of the finished items if you remember we had that pump up front how it ended up turning out was a hatch went here this opens up and then inside of the hatch is a false floor that allows my customer to access his uh, pump and plumbing. And it turned out really, really nice. And then of course, if you remember, we had the live well tub. Well, that's how that turned out. You've got all the plumbing that was originally there. The only thing that changed was the lid went in, the splash guard went in, and I added some LED lights underneath over there on the side by the overflow and when i originally tested this out on the water earlier in the video that cable that's hooked to that orange lever was not originally hooked up so that cable runs through and it actually um, connects to the back side of this actuator this flow right actuator and that is what um, opens and closes that valve so depending on which way you turn this, auto, empty, or recirculate, that cable actually opens and closes that valve on that pump. And then of course, on the switch panel, we went with the Flowrite variable live oil timer. It's got a three-way switch on, off, and then timer mode. Your timer mode goes from a straight run to you could do up to a one minute to 12 minute intervals of off. And um, beyond that, let's uh, kind of check out how it turned out. And I'll walk you through the basic layout of how this system operates now that it's finished. Oh, and quick note for those that are curious, all the onboard electronics, including the live well, timer, pumping unit, everything to do with the live well, is powered in here by Amped Outdoors 60 amp hour lithium battery. This one runs all the onboard electronics. These two run the Garmin trolling motor up front. So if we were out on the water and I wanted to fill the live well, I would simply turn the pump on and turn it to auto. And that would actually start filling up the live well. And again, if you remember, we had the through hole fitting in the back that is gravity fed. There she is. That went under the water line around and then to the pumping unit in front of the live well. Once it builds pressure, it pumps the water, fills it up and it works great. So let's just assume we already did that. And uh, now if we want to uh, recirculate the live well, all we're gonna do is put recirculate and you could do straight run. And all that's doing is pulling water out of the screen drain back to the pump and pumping it back through. Now, if you want to do the time delay, the variable timer, again, one minute off up to 12 minutes off, all you're gonna do is select your time and then just hit timer. What it's gonna do is it's gonna run for that first interval and it's gonna automatically time out depending on your setting and then it's gonna go off. And then it's just gonna keep track of your time and you'll hear it kick on and kick off throughout the day. Again, you could change that from one minute off to 12 minutes off. And then the coolest thing that I think about this setup is just getting the water out of the live well. So say you're done fishing for the day, you, and actually, funny enough, it just kicked off because I've still got it on timer mode. But say you're done for the day and uh, you pull your boat out of the water, your live well is full. Well, all you've got to do is turn it to uh, pump on. 
and then simply pull this out and then what it does is it kicks the water out of the side of the boat push it in and it's on recirculate now if you want to open up that pump valve completely on your way home after you trailer it just hit it to empty and then what it's going to do is it's going to open up the valve and water is going to go ahead and run out of the back and typically what I like to do is when I get out of the water and I'm done fishing I usually leave it on recirc or auto turn the pump unit to on pull this out pump out a majority of the water out the side of the boat and if I have about an inch or so left in the bottom I turn everything off and I just hit that to empty and it just opens up that valve and the remaining water will just drain out of the back of the boat and it's simple as that flow right makes it super simple it's a well thought out system I think that's about it guys with this setup I hope that you enjoyed this video it was definitely an experiment but it worked out and I'm glad that this project turned out the way that it did a lot of videos on this build more than I've ever done actually and um, the build video on this boat is up on the channel so check that out as well if you're interested in seeing that beyond that this live will turn out really awesome and I'm um, very excited about it and I know the customer will be too all made possible by the folks at Flowrite, so check them out. Available at tinyboatnation.net. Use that code Brigade and save 5% off your order at checkout. Thanks for viewing, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.